Fletcher, I help artists to find their own creative voice. And as you can see, I don't dress up to do it. I'm here in my studio. I'm working on an abstract painting. And I thought I would talk a little bit about why abstract and what am I looking for when I work abstractly? Because this is a question that people ask a lot. Why paint abstractly? So let me flip the camera around and I'll talk to you about what I'm working on currently. So this is a large abstract painting, currently in process, but I'm quite happy with how it's going. And I'll tell you why I'm happy with how it's going. My current objective is to express as much as I can physically in paint by the way I use paint by the way I apply paint to try and express emotional reactions you know things that are going on for me internally and there's a lot that goes on internally in all of us and so these can change and the mood can change dramatically from time to time so when I came in here today there was a lot of pink on this painting a lot of pink and orange and that's all gone and it's become much more landscapey colors which just happens instinctively as i go it's not an intention that i set and this is what's so important to communicate when it comes to this kind of art that it isn't unintentional just because it doesn't it isn't copying something that exists in real life we are not just throwing paint around for no reason now, my objective is to express emotion and feeling and to find ways to get my body to act in the way my mind is feeling. Not as easy as it sounds. And also, of course, I want to make a composition and colours that work and all of the other things that make a painting work. But primarily, my inquiry, my thing I'm trying to achieve is how do I get myself, the real me, out onto canvases or panels or paper. And I'm always asking that question in different ways. Different abstract painters will be asking different questions. They'll also have different personalities in different emotional states that they're expressing, if they're expressing emotion and not everyone is. There is always, behind good abstract art, in my opinion, there is always an idea or a question or a thought or a feeling. It's not just random. Even if we make it intuitively, we are then finding the meat. We know there's meaning in it. Nothing happens without a reason. We don't do anything by accident. And so if I flip the camera back around and look at this painting again, it's not finished, it's in process, but I can show you some of the places where I feel I've been successful and some of the places where I feel I haven't. So remember, success in this context is all about what I've decided success is. If I want to create a feeling of peace and calm on a sunny day, I don't think I've achieved that, but that wasn't what I wanted to create. If I want to create a sense of emotional turmoil, perhaps that's what I've done here. Now, when I came in here, as I said, there was a lot of pink and I'm getting rid of that slowly. That isn't like a conscious decision I made, but it's like, how am I feeling? I'm not feeling that. I didn't like it, I'm removing it. What I like about what's happening on some pieces of this painting is, I really like the drips because they're unintentional. They came about because of the way I applied the paint and the thickness of the paint. In certain places, like where I applied this paint, it wasn't wet and so it didn't drip. But where I applied up here, it was very obviously a lot of water in it and so it's really dripped. I like where there's paint splatters that have just, splatters of like water that have just gone onto this area because that was just part of the gestural painting. I like, this is a brush that I use, I'll show you. Uh, I'll hold it in front of the camera. I don't know what it's called. I bought it from an online art supply store, but the bristles are very plasticky and strongly separate. And so what happens when you apply paint, I'll show you. Can you see you get like lots of uncontrollable marks? You don't know what's going to happen with that. It's the fact that it's got long bristles, so I can't control it. It's the fact that it makes these energetic marks that I like. But not the, the whole thing hasn't been done with that brush. Sometimes it's a cloth pull through or a larger brush. Sometimes like here, it's a smaller brush. And I'm not 
too keen on any places where it feels, that to me feels contrived. It feels like I tried too hard. I'm not fond of the pink, so I'm going to need to do something about that. But I like the overall energy of it. And whatever I do, I don't want to lose that. And that can be a problem when you're painting. So when people have these videos on YouTube that say, here's how to make a quick and easy abstract painting, and they squeeze out four colours and show you how to spread those out, I'm sorry, but that's nonsense. That is not a proper painting. That is a, a wall decoration. Okay, that's fine if you want to do that. But if you really want to make abstract art that's satisfying to your soul, it needs to be about something that you care about, whatever that is. It needs to come from somewhere inside you. And the journey to discover how to do that is one of the most exciting things you can do in your life. So why on earth would you want to make it quick and easy? And anyway, you can't. Spoiler alert, impossible. What you can do, like I say, is make a quick and easy wall decoration if that's what you want. But I take abstract painting really seriously, so I take actual offence when people do that. So I hope this has shed some light on, at least on my thought process. And as I say, this is just what I care about. It's not what other people care about. But there is a whole history of art a section of the history of art where this is what people cared about. So the abstract expression is, for example, in the 40s and 50s in America, this was their whole thing. How do we get our emotions and our emotional reaction out onto canvas or panel? It's not always what abstract painters are after, but it's what I'm after. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you're interested in hearing from me on a regular basis and you don't already get my newsletter, there's a link below I share once a week, just education, help, tips, inspiration for artists. So make sure you grab that and I'll see you next time. Bye.